Well, hippity hoppity, happy Easter. I hope you're enjoying your holiday weekend, hanging out with some friends, family, some loved ones, getting some rest and relaxation before the world's largest casino opens once again. Now, in this video, we have some important things to get into. I want to get into the Easter Bunny's most recent message for the President of the United States. I want to give you an update on how my trading challenge is going, kind of a review of Friday's trade and all of last week in the rear view mirror. But most importantly, I want to touch on the major things that should be on your radar for the upcoming trading week because there's a lot of things going down, which is going to do nothing but promote volatility, big swings, and ideally, fingers crossed, some good trading opportunities. So that's what you should be prepped up for. Before we get into all that, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe. And with that being said, let's rock. And now, let's see what the Easter Bunny has to say to the President of the United States. Easter Bunny, too. <laughs> All jokes aside, there's a very real reason that the average person paying attention to the economy is not the most happy with the current administration. Since the 1800s, 51 out of 52 countries have reached 130% debt to GDP ratio have defaulted. That's where we're heading right now. This, even though it's the stat of the day, it's not a good stat. And it's even more unfortunate to realize that we are in a crash course with it. Debt to GDP in the US is on track to hit 130% for the first time by 2033. In 2007, the debt to GDP in the US was just 60% and it has quickly doubled since then. Currently, as I'm filming this in real time, the debt to GDP ratio is 124%. We're almost at the 130, which is higher than the peak of World War II, which was only 119. Since 2020, debt to GDP is up a whopping 20% after the the government's massive borrowing spree. Obviously, this is unsustainable. So when I saw this, I saw the projections, I saw what was going on. I wanted to do a little bit more of a deeper dive. And I found a stat that I want to share with you. In the past three years alone, US government debt has gone from 27.7 trillion. Currently, it is 34.5 trillion. As in the past three years, aligned with the current administration, our US government debt has increased by 24% percent. When all of a sudden you're realizing that there's a little bit less money in your wallet, when all of a sudden you're sitting there and you get that very uncomfortable feeling that it's just seemingly becoming more difficult to make ends meet, please understand that that is not in your mind alone. You're not having a mental episode. This is real. It's not like you're going schizophrenic or anything like that. All the quantitative and qualitative measures we have of the economy points to the signs that yes, you are feeling more pressure because there is simply more financial pressure being put on you. Is the state of the economy all because of one individual person? No, not really. It's We're too big, it's too complex. There's many things going on in the world. But when people vote, whether good or bad, whether right or wrong, we do just kind of ascribe all success and or failure to the current president. So am I sitting here saying that Joe Biden prompted all of this? No, that's crazy because we don't live in the world of 0% or 100%. But you're also the leader of the ship. The buck has to stop somewhere. And when we have all these, once again, quantitative and qualitative measures that things are bad, and then the current administration is going around saying, look how great Bidenomics is, whether you're left, right in the middle, you do vote or you don't vote, it's going to impact us all. And the average person who's starting to wake up and starting to pay attention is starting to realize, well, hang on, I'm being told one thing, that it's amazing and our recovery is great, but the average person actually isn't feeling that way. So that's the qualitative size. And then the quantitative side, when you see what's going on with our debt, our deficit, our taxes, no, none of it is adding up. So I just wanted to let you guys know that you're not crazy because truly right now there is more financial pressure. And in my humble opinion, I think that you are right to be a little upset about the current trajectory. Now, obviously, for all of us involved, I hope that the situation improves because why would anyone want to live in this type of squalor? But obviously, time will tell. I think there's enough time to right the course of the ship. I truly believe that. Maybe I'm a bit of an optimist, but obviously, uh, let's see how this all plays out. Now, with that being said, obviously, do not forget that the economy and the stock market are 
commonly thought to be the same thing, but they aren't. And in fact, yes, they're, they commonly are highly correlated, but they are still distinct entities, if you will. And one of the largest ones is even though the economy's under a bit of pressure, quite a bit of pressure right now, check this out. Dow surges more than 450 points. S&P 500 closes at a fresh record. So even though in real time, I'm sitting here saying, yes, the economy, it's looking rough. What's going on? This trajectory is not good. It's not sustainable how much money we're printing. On the other side of it, the stock market is literally hitting a new all-time high. So this is a great real-life example of the discrepancy between the two. Just because the economy and the stock market are commonly correlated, it doesn't mean that they're always correlated, and it definitely does not mean that they're the same thing. So even though we could sit here and talk about the economy and how we're not really the most optimistic about it, well, when it comes to the stock market, especially if you're an active trader, especially if you're a degenerate trader like me, yeah, ride the trend. So even though things are looking a little bit rough, for sure, I'm not going to disagree with that on the economy side. When it comes to the stock market, if the bull camp's winning, of course, I'm going to be in the bull camp. And that's exactly what I did on Friday. Daily DGEN report. I ended up making $650 on Friday alone. And it was easy peasy lemon squeezies. Basically, at 1030 in the morning, my training system, which I call Piper, she fired off a bullish signal on both the spy and the cues, four out of five confidence. Uh, she suggested a put credit spread as in closing above a certain value i ended up taking the trade via spx i just like it because it's european style contracts instead of american uh, i could explain that in a different video but there's just certain nuances that i like a bit more so i fired that trade off at 944 covered it at 330 and ended up making 660 before fees which was 604 after fees and just to kind of show you how it visually played out here early in the morning i saw that the ema cloud was bullish looking good going to the upside so right around here, 1045, I was like, all right, I think we're going to be above the intraday low. And then on the spike around 320, 330, that was enough for me to capture a large percentage of my profit. And that's exactly what I did, bringing my current account total to 33,546. So yes, we are in the journey of a recovery. And Overall, on the week, I was happy because even though it was a four-day trading week, the market was closed for Friday, ended up in total locking in 2.2 thousand. So that's how the account is up, which for the overall account, that's a growth of 7.7%, which is clearly, clearly beating the overall market, which was really barely up. And I ended up locking in securing just under 2.3. So good week, obviously in the past, if you've been tracking this trading journey, you know that some other times the numbers have been much more dramatic. But right now I'm trying to be monk like discipline in trading and just slowly and surely letting it grow i'm not really focusing on the magnitude i'm more so focusing on the percentage and trusting the process and hoping that day over day week over week month over month before you know it obviously i want to make that full recovery so thus far knock on wood things are going good but i think right there in the side of psychology and discipline it's very very pivotal in the world of trading of just focusing on that next one little step in front of you rather than the whole mountain that you have to scale but obviously just my personal opinion now i want to shout this out sign up for the newsletter macworz.locals.com it's in the description below it is 100 free so in locals not only do you get this for free but if you want you can also through locals which is the member management system where you get the newsletter but you could also sign up for the discord if you want to trade with me get the trades we have lectures on the weekend and we do a bunch of other other fun stuff it's just the best training community so check it out it is free for the premium membership if you use the code goonie just so you know but anyway since we have just concluded the month of march i had a rough trading month personally the start of it i took some falter in the past couple weeks i've now been on that recovery but if you look at march historically as shown on the screen it is known over the past 20 30 40 years to be a choppy crappy month so I just want to let you know that if you got whipsawed the same way I did, please understand that's exactly what the odds are. It wasn't like you were the odd man out and all of a sudden everyone else was just riding it. It is historically choppy month. That's exactly what we saw this particular March. I do have some good news that April, historically much more favoring of the bulls. It's a much calmer ride. Now, is that a guarantee? No, but this is just how historically the month of April has played out where you can see it right here, opens up strong and just slowly but surely grind until the end of the month and may is a little bit of a different story so is june but we'll get there and we'll handle it when we come to that bridge now anyway for the upcoming week so that's the full month generally favoring the bulls for the upcoming week 
it is going to be Fed speaker galore. Every single day of the upcoming week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we, in one form or another, most of the days, we're going to have multiple different Fed speakers. So this is why you should get the newsletter because it's just going to be your quickest way to very quickly check, oh, okay, who's speaking? When are they speaking? What are they chatting about? On top of that, I have all the ISM manufacturing callouts, the Jolt's job openings. Like I said, it just keeps going and going with all the Fed speakers. Uh, crude oil inventories. On top of that, OPEC is meeting for all of the energy traders listening to this video. And then on Friday, since it's the first Friday of a new month, we are going to be getting the unemployment report that comes out an hour before the market opens on Friday. So that's going to be a big one. So feel free to check this out. It is free. Just a handy thing that I wanted to share with you. Earnings season is effectively over. There's a couple you might care about. Dave and Buster's, Blackberry, Levi's. So that's there as well. I do give you the individual seasonality for each trading day. Just so you know, Monday, April the 1st, April Fool's Day. The Bulls have won this day 65% of the time. So every two out of three times, this day has favored the Bulls with a profit factor of 1.5. And then if you were hypothetically to buy it open and sell it closed on the S&P 500 futures market this on this particular day, this is what your equity curve would look like over the past 25 years. So obviously the Bulls are winning two out of every three times. Recently, there was one big loss or one big victory, I should say, for the bear camp. But other than that, still clearly the trend is to the upside. Now, historically, is it the most seasonally bullish day we've ever seen? No, but I just want to let you know that even though right now things are looking good, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up looking even better because seasonally, not only this upcoming day, but the upcoming month, does favor the bull camp. And then I break down how Piper's been doing my trades. Piper last week, this is what you can get in the Discord. She only missed one of these trades, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. These four, uh, obviously going seven out of eight, pretty good uh, on a decent recovery herself. And then all the major charts that I think something interesting is happening. And that's what I want to get into right now. So the SPY, the ETF tracking the S&P 500 to conclude the week hitting new all-time high of 524.61. If you look into any math or stats surrounding the overall market, you'll know that there's a very common trend of bullishness begets bullishness, bearishness begets bearishness. As in whatever way we're going, whatever momentum we have, we tend to see that more. So clearly the overall market for a while now, beautiful, higher highs, higher lows, things are looking good. So in the very short term, I would be expecting that trend to continue. Now, the Qs, the tech-heavy Nasdaq, actually did not hit a new all-time high last week, but we're within 1.2% of it, so not that far away. I'd be looking for the break and hold above 446 to see if we can get the test of that all-time high. Now, what did hit a new all-time high is gold, the actual commodity, you know, the whole Austin Powers thing, 2,256, two almost 57, looking very good. So for all the gold bugs watching this video, congrats to you because it is crushing it. And so is digital gold. Digital gold, aka Bitcoin, didn't hit a new all-time high, but man, oh man, it looks like it wants to. Check this out. Higher highs, higher lows, a little bit of a breather. The EMA cloud saves it. We have this breakout on Monday, March the 25th. Right now we're range bound. I love it. We're just getting that consolidation. All that energy is really getting squeezed together. And then I'm looking for that explosive, expansive move to the upside, ideally taking out the current all-time high just below 74,000 and then off to the races from there but it's not the only one. Solana right now looking great. Shout out to everyone in Solana. For me, I'm invested in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. Once in a while, I'll degenerately trade some of these other ones. But in all reality, most of the money I've made in crypto has just been from investing. Uh, it, it's almost like the KISS methodology, keep it simple, stupid, has really been, for me at least, what pays in the world of crypto. Speaking of crypto right now, it is worth overall at 2.69 trillion. Bitcoin trading just below 71 with a market cap of 1.4 trillion. Crypto is looking good, but it doesn't stop there. Obviously, a lot of the meme mania is still going on in the world of really Solana meme coins. Dog with Hat becomes third largest meme coin as Bitcoin clings to 70,000, but it doesn't just stop there. Dogecoin bets jump to 2 billion as price reaches highest level since 2021. So it is clearly alive and well. Now, if crypto keeps going, one of the major things you could pay attention to is coin looking good, higher highs, higher lows. I'm looking for the break and hold at 271 from there you have 284 coin looking very good and even though it's not really crypto it's kind of being associated with tech and ai i think nvidia is actually still looking pretty good kind of double topped here but i like it because it's still keeping its higher low pattern i like the ema cloud something worthwhile to put on your watch list amazon slowly but surely grinding to the upside meta 
M-E-T-A, ticker symbol, Meta, aka Facebook. It's kind of at an interesting decision point. If it quickly reverts from here, I kind of like it because it would be a lower risk entry. We could just risk something around 480, something like that. And if you could get the recovery off of it, maybe something worthwhile to pay attention to. On the flip side, Apple's not looking good. This has not been the year for Apple. Slowing sales, bunch of lawsuits. It just every single week there's more information coming out that is just simply not bullish for Apple. So I'm going to see if it could hold 168. If it doesn't, I think there's going to be a quick vomit to about 165. And just as a little bit of bonus content, I do want to throw out there Rumble looking good. Shout out to everyone watching this video on Rumble right now. Higher highs, higher lows high short interest so shorts are notoriously difficult to predict it's just they don't happen often so there's not much of a data trend to really say oh this is about to squeeze but i just want to throw out there it has the potential to squeeze yes i'm invested in it i want to be completely transparent but i also want to be honest about the numbers of okay i see the price going up i know that the average short is in around five dollars so they're already underwater the cost of borrow is high above 40 percent short interest is high around 18 so it has the ingredients for an interesting recipe. Just want to throw it out there. And it's not the only one. You have DJT, which is Donald Trump's equivalent to Twitter, aka True Social, officially going live with DWAC. So the ticker just switched. Obviously, explosive moves to the upside. It is just ripping, ripping, ripping. Its short interest is around 11%. But what's fascinating is the cost to borrow is closer to 200. So not on a percentage basis, as many people betting against it, there's still a healthy chunk. But what's crazy is how much money they're willing to pay to even be in the short position. And obviously, just based off of the recent moves, they are deeply underwater right now. So that's another one. Just want to throw it on your radar for something potentially crazy going down. Overall, those are the major things you should be paying attention to in the upcoming week. From an economy standpoint, yeah, we have a lot of debt. Our deficit is growing. We're not heading in the right way. But don't forget that the economy and the stock market are two different things. The stock market, the overall stock market, just locked in a new all-time high. We have some individual equities that are looking good, and we have some individual cryptos that are looking very good. For me and the trading journey, it's a slow, painful, grinding process. But I promise you, I have nothing but the faith in hopefully my new renewed monk-like discipline to slowly but surely grind it out and once again hit those new all-time highs. That's what I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this update and kind of prep video. Let me know your thoughts in a comment below. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.